Hi, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to make a really simple rocket stove. Right, so I'm actually testing out different formulas for aircrete. I've been doing this for a while now. I still haven't come up with a, um, a perfect aircrete to use, especially in the pizza oven build. So that's what we're doing today, just testing, but I'm going to use a rocket stove, obviously, so I can actually see how it performs, hopefully, if it stays together. Um, I've not, I'm not using a foam generator, I'm not going to build one of those, just want to do something simple. So I'm actually going to be using really cheap shaving foam. If nothing else, it'll be the best smelling concrete on the planet. So let's go through the uh, items that we're going to need. I've actually started to build the form, but I thought I'd video it, so I've stopped doing that for the time being. So let's have a look at the equipment that we're going to use, and then we'll have a look at how to make the concrete and obviously fill the uh, form to make the uh, rocket stove. So I'll just do the form that we're going to use to make the um, rocket stove. So this is the materials I'm going to use. So I've found a uh, piece of 9 mil plywood. So I've cut that up already. I'll go through dimensions in a minute. I'm going to be using some uh, skewers, some basic barbecue skewers. So these have been used uh, in the greenhouse. I'm going to need about four of those. I'm going to be using pipe insulation to create the cavity inside the rocket stove form. Now I have no idea where I got this piece of pipe insulation from. It looks uh, to be sort of an industrial spec because the outside diameter of this is 70 millimeters. I doubt you'll get that in a, um, a DIY store. So if you're going to go down this route, if it works of course, then buy the domestic size of pipe insulation and then cut extra pieces because this pipe insulation splits. So you can cut extra pieces and just wrap them around the outside. Uh, just roughly glue them into place until you get to about 70 mil outside diameter. So for the form we want two L-shaped pieces like that and this is 35 centimeters high by 34 centimeters long 17 centimeters wide there and so this part, as it sits up like that, will be 17 centimetres square. And then where the fuel goes here, this is 13 centimetres. Those are the dimensions if you're using something like this, which is uh, 17 millimetres or 7 centimetres in outside diameter. Right, so first thing we want to do is we want to put the two l-shaped plates together and then what's going to happen is if you imagine so it's like that the foam insulation will be running vertically down the form and then out in an l-shape and we need something to suspend that in place while we fill the form with concrete so the idea i think will work is if we take a skewer if we drill a couple of holes in the uh, long side and then the L shape a couple of holes there we push the skewer through those holes and through the form that will suspend the form in place we then fill with concrete and then we just turn the skewers and pull them out and that will all be held in place that's the idea anyway so if you imagine this coming down in the center and I'll cut a 45 and it'll run that way. So we need probably one hole there, one hole that here, and then probably a hole there and a hole there. So we put the two plates together, I'm gonna to go to drill, find a drill bit which is the same size diameter as the skewers. Drill four holes, and then we'll come back, I'll show you the next bit. So now we've drilled those holes, the next thing to do is I want to just assemble with the back on and the base. So this is 17 centimetres, so I just need to make a piece um, 17 centimetres wide by 35 centimetres deep, and that'll give us the 
back for the form. So I've made the basic box, got a piece underneath, a piece on the back, um, and rough dimensions. So the piece of the back, 17 by 35. The piece for the underneath is slightly different, 17 again by about 34 and a half. I've already cut the pieces for the front for there and the actual front of the form and they're going to be 17 by 22 and 17 by about 15 and a half and then this one 17 by again about 15 and a half so once we've got the box cut next thing to do is the insulation so I've roughly measured the two pieces and then cut them at a 45 degree angle but again a rough 45 degrees just using a set square let's see I'm going to do you can use almost any glue for this apart from something like super glue um, I'm going to use some uh, carpet spray adhesive just to spray the two parts of the foam and then just glue those together so carpet spray adhesive works quite well with this foam uh, holds it in place just enough uh, without being too firm. I've trimmed the front piece of pipe as best I can. The top doesn't matter, doesn't matter how much it sticks out because this will be open. Next thing to do is I'm going to be placing this on one side where the holes are drilled, lining that up, pushing the skewer through to the other side and then move this to the centre. Okay, so that's the basic principle. Next thing to do is I'm going to put the front plate on here, this plate on. Um, when we mix the aircrete, I'm going to be filling the base up first as much as I can. Put the plate on here and then fill from the top. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to have to paint something on here like oil, old vegetable oil or uh, old engine oil just to act as a release agent on the foam tubing and also the wooden form. And so it's just a case now of filling our form up with concrete. I've put some duct tape around the bottom to try and prevent at least some of this concrete from disappearing. Right, so that's the mould filled, or nearly filled anyway. Um, I'm going to find somewhere level to put this on so we get a nice level top on it. And as the concrete starts to set, I'm then going to attempt to try and pull out the uh, skewers. If I try and do it now it's too wet and what will happen is the skewers are dragging on this and pulling it to one side um, so again I'll leave it a few more minutes and then try and take the skewers out and then I'm going to leave this for about five six days to hopefully fully cure and then attempt to try and get the the foam out. So what I think I'll do is a second video demolding and then setting the first fire. I'm going to have to work out how to put a little bit of a grate in the bottom bit just to uh, obviously place the wood on so that we get some air circulation underneath but we can do that for the second video. So there you go part one of our rocket stove uh, video series. In the second part as I said we'll be demolding and then testing it. I think this is Hopefully it's firm enough now to 
pull some of these skewers out might leave it a little bit longer I think but that was just to demonstrate that they are quite easy to get out I'm not sure it's going to be the same case for trying to get this foam insulation out but we'll see so thank you very much for watching please subscribe to the channel your support is very much appreciated and hit the like button on this particular video if you've enjoyed what you've seen